Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm, I'm good. How are you? Very good. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer some questions. My pleasure. I really liked the movie. <laughs> Let's say that oh. first. And I really liked um, uh, your portrayal of uh, Father Amor. Um, there are a lot of aspects I really like. For example, his hu humor, his dislike for sugar in his coffee <laughs> and him wearing the red socks. Um, what are things you really no. like about Do you know him. what the Red Sox are about? Did you pick up what the Red Sox connect to? I think because he's a big fan of football, like soccer. No. No? Um, he, well, he was in, in a way, but he comes from Modena, right? So it was one of those funny things, actually, because the, the argument constantly in the city of Rome is always about the local derby. You know, are you Lazio or are you AS Roma? You know, so I would ask, you know, every time I met somebody who was a friend of his or a colleague of his, I would say, where was he in that argument? And nobody seemed to knew, they seemed to know, which was odd because everybody has an opinion on that, you know. And then I met one man, <coughs> a former colleague of his, who said, no, he never got involved in that debate because he was always moderner. Mm. So he followed the moderner soccer team. But apart from Gabriele Amorth coming from Modena, what else comes from Modena? Ferrari. So he wears the red socks under his cassock because of Ferrari. And he um, also has a Ferrari sticker on his Lambretta scooter. As well. <laughs> I yeah, saw you know, that, yes. The sense, sense of humor, I think, was really important. And, you know, I started, you know, discovering things about the character and looking into his biographical details. And, you know, it just became very clear to me that that humor was something that really helped him do his job. That's why he was so uh, effective in his job, you know, basically boiling down to two things. One was the purity of his faith, and the other thing was his sense of humor. Now, if you think about it, if you're dealing with afflicted people all the time and their families, you're living in this world, of, you know, it's a very dark place to be. People are going through the worst experiences of their life, and he is the man tasked with the job of trying to reach into that person and bring them some kind of solace and bring them to the light. So it's understandable to me that, you know, the combination of the purity of faith and his sense of humor, that's how he was able to stay balanced. You know, he's dealing with that darkness, but he, he knew what his uh, job was. And, uh, but he also was able to, you know, laugh at absurd things. And also, you know, another thing, key thing with him, you know, because of that purity of his faith, he would never let the truth be covered, you know, and that must be very difficult in such a hierarchical organization, you know, where maybe the truth isn't your responsibility on a particular subject, you know. And uh, so I just, I like that aspect of him. I, I saw him as a very courageous man. And what are things um, you learned about um, him that you would have liked to incorporate in the movie but didn't get the chance to? Oh, well, I think there's a lot there. I mean, look, you know, the, the thing about Gabriele is he left behind 12 books, 12 books of first-person experience. You know, there are elements probably from the first two that we've touched on, maybe, you know, um, but there's so much more to come. You know, there's like, you know, it's a gigantic treasure chest of information. Um, I wouldn't want to discuss what we might do a second time because that would be giving the, the game away, wouldn't it? So... <laughs> and um, at the end of the, the movie we discovered that the true priests have to visit a lot of locations um, can we expect the sequel and some of the elements you still want to portray um, well here, here's the thing every time I've ever been involved in a film where they start talking about sequels they never happen right and up till this point I've kept my career sequel free uh, I used to have a real attitude about it when I was a, a lot younger. But now as I get older, I'm actually a little bit more nostalgic. And there's quite a few characters that I played in my life that I wouldn't mind doing a second story of, you know, Bud White from LA Confidential or, you know, the Robin Hood film, you know, that could have been a number of stories told under that banner. But uh, so we'll see, you know, but there is very definitely a clear setup at the end of the uh, the movie. You know, there's 200 and this is a biblical um, uh, story. You know, there's 200 fallen angels that get sent to the earth and buried under the earth. So essentially there's 199 to go. So we've got a few sequels in front of us. Okay. <laughs>
I would really like that. But <laughs> we'll see. Yes, we'll and see. I have a really short question. The very last so question. So sorry, Fabian, we're out of time. Sorry. Oh, oh. Okay. Fabian, where did you go? <laughs> what is your question? What's your question? Short question. Was there real whiskey in the flask? No. <laughs> It was tequila. Okay. What, are you crazy? <laughs> no, that was a joke. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, ciao.